the Lamborghini Aventador is dead. Still, it's had a good innings, hasn't it? It's been around since 2011, so 11 years. It's nuts. The final swan song was the Ultima. 780 horsepower's worth of swan song. And what an amazing thing. That's the past. Let's look to the future. The new Aventador, which won't actually be called the Aventador, but it will be the Aventador's replacement. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about that car in this video and show you what I think it's gonna look like. Because I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. How do I know that there's gonna be a replacement for the Aventador? Well, duh, of course, they're gonna have a flagship car, aren't they? But also because of this. It's a spy shot of a prototype being tested, and it's a Lamborghini prototype. And you might be thinking, well, how do you know it's not the replacement for the Huracan? Why is it the replacement for the Aventador? Well, look at the size of this thing. It's too long and too wide to be the replacement for the Huracan. And there's some other design cues as well. If you look at the front of the car, the way it's all sculptured around the headlights, and it's really, really camouflaged, but if you look at that, and then you compare it to the front of the Terzo Millennio concept, can you see that outline? It's close, isn't it? Also, if you look at the scoop in the roof and the big air vents by the doors, what's that like? It's like the Cyan. Then you go around the back, you'll notice that the tail lights and the rear diffuser are like those on the Centenario. Yes, this is definitely the Aventador replacement. And I'm pretty sure that the actual road car, when it's unveiled, will look rather like this. Yeah, you thought the Aventador was badass when it was first unveiled. This is gonna blow you away. But you've only seen one angle of it. There's more to come and, and it's just as good from whichever way you look at it. Now let's talk about the engine and you're probably quite worried because a lot of manufacturers are downsizing and going hybrid. And yes, Lamborghini will go hybrid for the replacement for the Aventador. However, they won't necessarily be downsizing. Stefan Winkleman, the boss of Lamborghini, has said that the replacement for the Aventador will be a V12, though it will still be hybridized. And this is part of a move that Lamborghini is going to ensure that all of its models from 2024 will have some form of hybridization. Anyway, back to the V12. You see, Lamborghini has been fitting its flagship models with a V12 engine for almost 60 years. In fact, in 2024, Lamborghini will be celebrating 60 years of building production V12 engines. The first one went into the 350 GT, and since then, the Muras had one, the Countach has had one, the Diablos had one, the Murcielago has had one, and the Aventador has had one. And so to will its replacement. So far, the most powerful V12 Lamborghini has produced is in the Cyan. So it's essentially the 6.5 litre naturally aspirated V12 from the Aventador, only with power boosted all the way up to 785 horsepower. That's not quite enough. So they added on an electric motor, which has 34 horsepower. So combined, the Cyan has 819 horsepower. Now Lamborghini isn't just gonna take that unit and put it into the Aventador's replacement. Stefan Winkelmann has said that won't be happening. They're gonna be building an all new V12 for the new car. And you can bet it's gonna be more powerful than anything that's gone before. Not only will the engine be new, so will the hybrid system. You see on the Cyan, it didn't use a normal battery, it used super capacitors. Now they're really good because one, they're lightweight, the whole system only weighed like 34 kilograms, and they can actually discharge their power really, really quickly for an instant performance boost. They can also charge up again really, really quickly. What they're not so good for though, is sustained power boosting over a longer period of time. Batteries, which while being heavier, are much better for that. I'll tell you what batteries are also much better for, reducing your emissions, especially in the European test cycle. And Lamborghini has this target to reduce its overall emissions by 50% by 2025. So all of its range are gonna become plug-in hybrids. In fact, in the future, probably about 10 years away, they will release an all electric hypercar, but that's some way off yet. Now Lamborghini has actually dabbled with plug-in hybrids before. See, in 2014, it revealed this, the Asterion concept. It's a Grand Toro with a plug-in hybrid system. However, the project got canned because they wanted to focus all their attention on making the Urus SUV. And what a brilliant business decision that was because the Urus is Lamborghini's best-selling car ever. In fact, I know someone who really loves an Urus. Yeah, him. Ha ha ha, all day, every day. Anyway, the Asterion used the 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10 from the Huracan, only it was supplemented by one electric motor. And then it had a further two electric motors on the front axle. And combined, the electric motors could actually produce 300 horsepower between them. And they give you electric only range of 31 miles. But when you add in the 610 horsepower from that V10 engine, you've got a combined 910 horsepower. 
that this was a concept car and concept car performance figures are always a little bit optimistic. So what does that mean for the hybrid Aventador? Well, they're probably going to adopt a similar setup to that Asterion. You see, that setup is similar to the Ferrari SF90. Now, the SF90 uses a 4-litre twin-turbo V8 made to an electric motor, then two electric motors on the front axle. And combine those electric motors produce 220 horsepower and the petrol engine 780 horsepower for a combined 1,000 horsepower. Now, we already know that Lamborghini's next V12 will be more powerful than the one in the Sian, which does 785 horsepower. So it's going to do at least 800 horsepower just from that internal combustion engine alone and you can bet that Lamborghini's three electric motors are going to put out more than the 220 of the Ferrari so that you get a combined output of more than 1000 horsepower so more than the Ferrari SF90 in fact Lamborghini are clearly benchmarking that car when developing the replacement for the Aventador because an SF90 has been seen testing outside Lamborghini's factory. Not only is Lamborghini keen to trump Ferrari in terms of the actual horsepower figures, it's going to want to actually beat it with stats out on the track. So the Ferrari SF90 can do 0-60 in 2.5 seconds and I've timed one over the standing quarter mile at 10 seconds dead. So you can bet that the Aventador replacement will go a bit quicker. So 0-60, 2 to maybe 2.2 seconds, standing quarter mile, they'll be trying to get it under the 10 second barrier. But they've got some way to go. The fastest that I've ever had out of a Lamborghini SVJ in a drag race is 10.4 seconds over the quarter mile. 0.4 of a second is quite a lot. Now, one of the ways that Lamborghini might make up some of that time is through the gearbox. You see, in the current Aventador, you've got a seven-speed, single-clutch robotized manual. When you launch the car, it's so brutal, it just dumps the clutch, and it often spins up its wheels, which loses you a few tenths of a second over a quarter mile. The new car will get a dual-clutch system, which can just launch better. Also, it will be helped out by those electric motors on the front wheel, because electric motors can actually monitor their power delivery much better than a petrol motor can, so it can just tape it back to reduce spin so you're always just on the limits of traction which is perfect for launching and the replacement for the Aventador is really going to need to be able to put its power down because I know it's going to be starting with over a thousand horsepower but Lamborghini being Lamborghini over the car's lifetime the power output will steadily increase they do it with all their models I mean even with the current Aventador it started off with 700 horsepower then they released the SV which had 750 then the SVJ came with 770 horsepower now the final one the Ultima has 780 horsepower now how would you like to see me drag race all those cars hmm? yeah if you want to click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below it's an epic race now, and usually manufacturers wait a while after they've released a car to issue a special edition, one with a bit more power. But Lamborghini might have to be a little bit quicker with the replacement of the Aventador because of this. You see, it looks like a Ferrari SF90, and it is, but it's a special edition version called the VS, which will have a bit more power. And so Lamborghini don't want to release their new Aventador and then just be left there with the second most powerful car in its class, do they? They'll soon be releasing special edition versions. And if you want to find out exactly what those special edition versions will be, you need to follow this channel. So make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell icon. And as soon as we get information about those cars, we'll update you. Obviously, before Lamborghini releases special edition versions, it's got to release the car itself first. So when's it going to arrive? Well, Lamborghini has said that it'll unveil its first hybrid car in 2023, but it probably won't be the Aventador replacement. It's more likely to be a facelifted version of the Urus that uses the hybrid system from the Porsche Cayenne Turbo SE Hybrid Cayenne Thingy Majig, whatever its name may be. Anyway, that car will have about 780 horsepower, so pretty powerful. No, you're going to have to wait till 2024 for the Aventador replacement. So how much will it cost when it does arrive? Well, if you think about the original Aventador when it went on sale back in 2011, that started at £250,000. An SVJ is £350,000. A Ferrari SF90 is £380,000. So it's quite likely that the Aventador replacement will top the £400,000 mark. 